Hi, this video is going to talk about solving percent problems. We're going to look at the basic um, percent formula of uh, part over a whole equals the percent over 100. We're going to break that down and do a couple examples with that. And then I've got seven sample problems that we're going to go over as well to apply that. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at percents and percent problems. So a percent is just a ratio out of 100. So if we're talking something like 13%, that's the same as 13 out of 100. So to find a simple percent, 6 is what percent of 8? We can take that ratio of part over a whole. So 6 divided by 8. If we reduce that fraction and change it to a decimal, we get 0.75. So then as a percent, 0.75 as a percent, we've got to move the decimal point over two places to make it a percent. So 0.75 as a percent is going to be 75%. So just to go over some common percentages, um, just knowing these will, will help you solve things a little easier. One half or 0.5 is the same as 50%. One fourth or 0.25 is the same as 25%, 1 fifth is the same as 20%, and then 1 tenth is the same as 10%. Now multiples of 10% are easy to work with. Um, a lot of times we can do these in our head. So if we we're going to do 10% of 6, in order to do 10%, we just need to move the decimal point back one, because um, we're taking 1 tenth. 10% 10 is the same as 1 tenth. So that's going to be 6. So then we can use that for other multiples as well. So 5%, if 10% is 6, then 5% is just going to be half of that, or 3. If we did 10% and 5%, we would get 15%, or 9. Just add the 6 and 3 and get 9. If 10% is 6, then 20% is going to be 12. We just double it. And if 10% is 6, then we can triple it to get 30%, or 18. So if you haven't got multiples of 10%, um, they're pretty easy to work with. Just figure out what 10% is first, and then take multiples from there. So in all problems that we have um, in doing percentages, they can all be solved with this one um, equation. So the part over the whole equals a percent over the hundred over 100. Now in some places you might have heard it, the is over of. Some uh, teachers in some text uh, describe it as is over of. That's just because in a word problem, when you're talking about the part, it says is, and when you're talking about the whole, it says of. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So what is 20% of 40? So the way we would set up this is x over 40 equals 20 over 100. We don't know what the part is, so the part is x. The whole is 40. The percent is 20 and it's always over 100 for a percentage. So the is over the of, it says what is, so we don't know the is part. And the of, it says of 40. So that just gives you a, a little trick as far as what goes in the part and what goes in the whole. So whichever one helps, to, um, helps you to get this right is fine. So now to solve for x, we've got to cross multiply here. So we're going to multiply the x times the 100 and the 40 times the 20 and set them equal to each other. So we get 100x equals 800. To solve for that, we just divide by 100 and get x equals 8. All right, another version of the problem. 6 is 25% of what number? So we would set up 6. We know what the part is. Here, we don't know what the whole is. So the variable here is going to be in the denominator for the whole because we don't know of what number. And we do know the percentage is 25. And again, we cross multiply 25x equals 600, divide by 25, and we get x equals 24. And in the last problem, 10 is what percent of 50? So here we know the part in the whole. The part is 10, the whole is 50. What we don't know is the percent. So here we put the variable in for the percent. So x over 100, we cross multiply. And here we get 50x equals 1,000. Divide by 50, and you get the percent equals 20%. Okay, let's take a look at these seven sample percent problems. 
Okay, on the first one, what is 12% of 40? We're going to use our part over whole equals percent over 100. Uh, so our what is, so we don't know the part, so it's going to be x. The whole is out of 40, of 40. So our whole is going to be 40. And then we do know the percent is 12. And we always have 100 here for a percent. Now we're going to cross multiply to solve. So 12x equals 4,000. Divide both sides by 12, and we get x equals 4.8. All right, 8 is what percent of 25? So in this one, we have the is, or the part. We know what the part is. The part is going to be 8. We also know the whole. The of is 25. What we don't know is the percent, so that's where the variable is going to be. Cross multiply, 25x equals 800. So x equals 32 when we divide both sides by 25. Okay, here 15 is 30% of what number? So we know the part, which is 15. We don't know the whole. Of what number? We don't know the of. So that's where our variable goes in this one. And we do know the percent, 30. Now we're going to cross multiply and get 30x equals 1,500. Divide both sides by 30 and get x equals 50. I wanted to point out here, other than cross multiplying, if you saw that 15 is half of 30, you could say that this is going to be over 50 because half of 100 is 50. So 15 over 50 equals 30 over 100. So where the numbers work out easily and you can see what the um, ratio is going to be, you can do that as a shortcut. Otherwise, just cross multiply and divide to get the answer. OK, and the next problem, uh, if there's a sale, for 25% off all shoes and you buy a pair that's normally $84, how much do you pay? So we can calculate what that discount is. So we've got an $84 pair of shoes. We could multiply it by 0.25. 25% is the same as 0.25. And we're going to get $21. Then we can take that $21. That's just the discount. We want to find how, how much we paid after the discount. So $84 minus 21 and we get 63. Now there's another way you could do this as well. If we're taking 25% off, that means we're paying 75%. So rather than doing this in two steps, we could just say 84 times the 75% and get 63 that way. All right, in this one, if the sales tax on $450 is three is $33.75, what's the sales tax rate? So we're going to use part over whole equals percent over 100 again. So we know the part, and we know the whole. What we're looking to find is the percent. So that's where the variable goes. Now we can cross multiply. 450x equals 3,375. Divide both sides by 450. And we get x equals 7.5. So our tax rate is 7.5%. Okay, the next problem says, in a survey, 15% of people said geometry was their favorite high school math class. If nine people picked geometry, how many total people took the survey? So we know the part is nine. What we don't know is how many total people took the survey. So that's the whole, that's the unknown. 
And we know that that nine represents 15% of the people that took it. So again, cross multiply, 15x equals nine times 100 or 900. We divide both sides by 15, 900 divided by 15 gets us 60. So 60 total people took this survey. All right, your starting salary at a job is $40,000. You get raises the first two years of 5% and 4%. What is your salary after these raises? Now, the one thing we cannot do is add these two now. So we can't say, well, that's going to be a total of 9% and take 9% of 40,000 and figure it that way. We've got to do this in two steps. So we're going to start with our $40,000. In our first year, we got 5%. So we're going to multiply that times 5%. And that's going to get us $2,000 is the raise for our first year. So then that gives us a salary of $40,000 plus our $2,000 raise or $42,000 after one year. Then we're going to get a 4% raise. So then we're going to take the 42000 and this is why we can't just add them because that 4% is going to be applied to 42,000, not the original 40,000. So we're going to get 42,000, multiply that times 4% and get 1680. So that's our raise. So we've got 42,000 plus our 1680. So after the two years, after both raises, we're going to be making 43,680. One thing we could do um, to get right from here to here, rather than two steps, so rather than multiplying by 0 0.05, if you multiplied 40,000 times 1.05, the one just makes it so we're keeping the $40,000 and then adding the 0 0.05 on top of it, that would have gotten us $42,000. So that's a, just a step to go from here to here in one step rather than two steps. But whatever makes sense uh, is the way to go. And you can do the same thing over here as well. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos, just comment below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. And I've got another suggestion for you to watch right here. Thank you and come back again soon.